Right, so we're just waiting for race 160 to begin. Just a reminder that race 159, which ended in some controversy, was a disqualification for Aberdeen University. So Aberdeen will not progress in more like Anglia and Alpha, provided they paddle down the course in one piece. We'll move through to the quarterfinals. So we're on to junior singles, and this is race 160, contested between Nia Almond on the Berkshire Station and Phoebe Muir of Exeter Rowing Club on the Buckinghamshire Station. So they leave the start together. Phoebe, a hell of a lot of pedigree in this. She was Women's Junior 15 National Champion in last year. And she's also 2018 Women's Junior 16 Junior Interregional Gold Medalist and Bronze Medalist at the National Schools Regatta. So I expect a very strong showing from her today. She's on the left-hand side of your picture in that green kit. On the right with the yellow blades is Nia Almond of Merchant Taylor's School. And you can see there Phoebe being warned early on. Equally, like you said, Tom, uh, Nia is also pretty pedigree. She's got quite a few wins uh, under her belt. Pretty, pretty successful rower. Absolutely, yeah. She got through to the quarterfinals last year. And I, I totally forgot to introduce you, <laughs> Una. It's Una Hughes <laughs> joining me here in the commentary box on a beautiful afternoon in Henley. Welcome, Una. Are you looking forward to this afternoon? I am, indeed. Some good racing coming up. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Well, we couldn't start with anything better than the junior singles. A gladiatorial contest, carnal and primal in its very basic of most natures. And as Exeter make their way down the course, or Exeter Phoebe Muir in control of this race in the green kit. Keeping the rate high, keeping the intensity on as she moves down. She won't want to let Nia back into the race here because she has established a margin of control that's going to be pretty hard to relinquish. You have to stay at this stage, Una, in a single skull when your opponent has moved out to this level of lead. Is there any chance for Nia Ormond here to come back on terms? Well, it, it's a long, long race when you're in a single. It's, it's a long slog. Um, and, I mean, fingers crossed for Nia, but th that is a, a big lead. So she's really going to have to push to chase down the extra boat. Um, but good luck to her. Well, especially in a single skull. <laughs> Where it's just you and essentially your mind. You're fighting not only the person next to you, but actually your mind, which is screaming at you exactly. to stop rowing. And exactly. that's not going to help her at all because all she can see and hear is the churn of the umpire's launch and the glare of English summertime, which we're pleased has finally arrived here <laughs> in Henley. Equally, she won't know how big the lead is, so she won't know really how much to push. I mean, she'll have to turn to look, which equally could upset the balance of her boat or you know, all kinds of things. So she's really going to have to put the pressure down now. Of course, she's going to she's gonna have to do something soon because as the two crews, the two scullers approach the barrier, Phoebe Muir of Exeter Rowing Club in what I would describe as total control of this contest of the junior singles. This is race 160. If you are listening, we've got three more junior single skull races coming up, followed by the latter end of the development. Cox Falls was ended in drama just the last race ago when Aberdeen were disqualified on the start. Junior singles after that, followed by some championship eights and championship quads, which I have to confess I'm thoroughly looking forward to watching championship events. Always the flagship end of the racing. But as we watch these two scholars make their way down the course, stunning drone shots, which every time I look at them, every time they appear on my screen, I'm sort of, my breath is taken away by the sheer beauty of not only the Oxfordshire countryside, but actually the fact that the, all the rowers and all the scholars are always so professional, so proficient, and so coherent in the way that they're rowing. And Phoebe Muir, the most tangible demonstration of that we have. She looks so calm and collected as well. It's, it's incredible. But I suppose with a lead like that, she can afford to be pretty calm and collected. Yeah, absolutely. No problems at all. And I understand race 161 has just left the state boat. So with Phoebe in relative control of her heat, I think we can move back to the start for a heat of the junior single skulls. As I said, race 161. Meda Laukite on the Berkshire, sta Berkshire Station. I apologise if I've pronounced that wrong. She's from Mossbourne Academy. And it's Tilly Abbott from King School, Canterbury on the Buckinghamshire Station. Mossbourne, a pretty interesting school. They were the first school in the country to introduce a policy whereby you they would accept people based on their physical aptitude for rowing at year nine. So they would allow people into the school if they were built for rowing, essentially. So they're trying to build a bit of a dynasty, trying to build a program and a coherent sound infrastructure. And it's good to see them competing at the sharp end of junior women's rowing. And it looks like to me, Meda having a pretty good race so far. Meda, Meda, I'm really not sure how to pronounce that name and I apologize if I am botching it. 
people botch my name all the time as well, so I completely understand that. <laughs> well, your, your name's simple. It's just like a Rihanna song, so it's pretty <laughs> exactly. easy to do when you've exactly. got that Exactly. It's the spelling that confuses people. But um, the uh, Mida, or Meda, as we're not sure, um, it'll be very interesting to see how she performs in this race, as there doesn't seem to be any kind of uh, races that she's done recently in a single skull. Uh, she's competed at national schools um, in the Coxless Four, and she's achieved bronze in 2016. Um, so it'll be very, very interesting to see how she does in a, in a single skull. Well, the junior rowing news blog, of which I confess to being fairly well acquainted with, <laughs> flagged Mida out from Mossbourne Academy as one of the single skull competitors to look out for. And it certainly appears that Junior Rowing News, with an uncanny knack of getting things right, has done it again. And indeed, the Mossbourne Academy Sculler is moving away quite comfortably here from her opposition from King's School, Canterbury. Not, of course, to take away from Tilly Abbott, who reached the Junior Trials in uh, last year. And she also took first place in the single skull at Barnes and Mortlake Regatta. And this year, she won the D final of the single skull of the 2018 National Schools Regatta. She's had a very successful season of racing so far, but it looks to me like it could be coming to a premature end here at Henley Women's Regatta because she is going to have to produce Herculean efforts to come back on terms here. <laughs> that is an incredible lead. This can so often be the case, can't it, Una, with single skulls, and that it's either an incredibly tightly fought race where the skullers can barely get an inch off each other, or it's over within about 20 strokes. That's exactly it. I think a lot of it's in the start. I think when you when you come off the start in a single, it, uh, it's a lot of it is psych psychological as well. So you're you're trying to get right out in the front so you can lead there. So you know when you when you need to push because your your opponent is pushing on you. So a lot of it is really really psychological, and they've got to be incredibly strong to be in these single skulls. Yeah, I think the word that's so often thrown around is gladiatorial. <laughs> and certainly. The scholar from Mossbourne Academy, making full and frank use of her experience here at her new women's regatta to push on. You can just see the way she sculls. Greg picked up on it earlier with some of the, the rowers in the development four. They're taught very well in that they lock on at the front and that first three to five inches of the stroke, there's a lot of power, there's a lot of emphasis there to get the blades locked and loaded and to make sure that all the power comes through there. So the middle of the stroke almost flows on its own. You don't need to put an awful lot of power in there because the momentum you've built up at the beginning of the stroke is allowing you to just progress through nicely. And you can see there, look at that. That's a resounding oh, lead. Wow. Like you said, incredible footage. So with uh, the Mossbourne Academy Sculler in what I would describe as total control of that race, 162 is now underway. Another heat of the junior single skulls contested between Orla Supple of Tideway Sculler School on the Berkshire Station and Rachel Granger of Headington School on the Buckinghamshire Station. So two stalwarts of the junior rowing scene, two scholars who I'm sure will know each other pretty well having contested these events throughout the season. Orla Supple, a member of the highly renowned Tideway Scholars School, and she took fourth place at the women's, in the women's B final single skull at the National Schools Regatta, and she also took bronze in the Coxus Quad at the 2017 British Rowing Championships. And Rachel, of course, under the dynasty that Ryan Domain has built at Headington School. She came second at the Evesham Junior Head of the River in both the women's J J18 doubles and singles. And at last year's Henley Women's Regatta was part of a Cox Four that made it through to the semi finals. So an athlete with plenty of experience with the Henley Women's Regatta course, but at the moment, the Scholars athlete, Orla Supple, getting out and closing this race out before it's even really begun. Look at the punch there at the back end of the stroke. I certainly remember when I was racing, whenever we'd come up against a Headington cr crew, we'd be shaking in our boots because they're so well known for, for their, their squads. Um, so this is really an incredible lead by the Tideway Scholars. Just to confirm the result of race 158, I've just seen one of the comments on the YouTube stream. If you do want something saying, if you do want us to illuminate something for you, please do comment on the YouTube stream. We are keeping an eye on it. And the result of race 158 was a win for the University of Surrey Boat Club by four lengths over Leeds Rowing Club. So please do let us know what you'd like us to say. If we are saying things wrong, if we're botching certain aspects of this commentary, we are always welcome. We always enjoy feedback. But at the moment... The only feedback all the supple is getting from us is positive. She's really taking this race on and putting 
putting a certain amount of damage on the reputation of Headington School here by comfortably dealing with all her opposition's efforts at the moment. I think she's got nearly three lengths there on Rachel Granger of Headington School. Rachel Granger is certainly not looking defeated, though. She's really putting in a good fight, trying to chase down all the supple. Well, I have to say, Headington do embody that never-say-die attitude. It's very rare that you see a Headington sculler give up, or a Headington rower give up beyond that. And as you say, Unar, there's no doubting that people fear Headington. That's Kit. Sends shivers down most people's <laughs> spines when they roll up on the start line. You know that they're going to be well drilled. You know they're going to be professional. And you know they're always going to have synchronised kit. Yeah. Which is just something that makes me so happy. And they've always got their caps on as well. Absolutely. They always look perfect. The game face. The game face. That's exactly it. <laughs> but keep an eye on that as all the supple makes their way down the course in that third heat of the junior single skulls. We're on to race 163. Lauren Henry of Leicester Rowing Club on the Berkshire Station. And Lara Britton on the Buckinghamshire station in our fourth heat of the junior women's single skulls. Bedford Modern School, a bit of home interest for me. I grew up in Bedford, didn't go to Bedford Modern School, rode at Star Club, we were better than they were. No disputing that. But it's always good to see Bedford Modern School doing well under the stewardship of Mark Barrington. But as it stands, Lauren Henry of Leicester Rowing Club absolutely tanking it out at the start. You can see even from that behind the sculler shot that she has gone. I think that's the word. She's gone. She has left Lara Britton in the dirt, so to speak. Yeah, very impressive here from Lauren Henry. And at this stage, Una, I think <laughs> with the quarter mile rapidly approaching <laughs> and her some 634 lengths up on her opposition, <laughs> how much of a, an aspect is this where she can sort of wind down and, and try and actually conserve some energy for later racing? I think that's definitely what she should be doing. I mean, barring disaster, this race is, uh, is I mean, I, I, don't, I don't want to say it, but pretty much dead and buried. I mean, that is some... some somewhat of a lead <laughs> absolutely uh, very little that Lara Britton could do about that you wonder when there's such a deficit in the opening exchanges as to whether something happened on the start that negatively impacted Lara Britton and Bedford Modern School because she has been she has been dropped unfortunately and, and that's that's ruined it from our perspective because it's not much of a spectacle for us to commentate on but you know really made the race for Lauren Henry Just reading the comments, race 163 is actually on the course now. This is contested between Leicester Rowing Club and Bedford Modern School. I can see someone's asked uh, who has race 163 been and whom is the male commentator? I'm hoping whoever is asking that isn't related to Lara Britton. Um, the male commentator, I'm not going to reveal my name. <laughs> Just watching the two scholars pass our commentary point and make their way down beyond the barrier. Still a long way to go. A thousand metres left. And it's a lonely road here for Lara Britton. Just watching those two scholars come past, actually, the size difference between them was quite noticeable. <laughs> Which in a single skull can make all the difference. And that can be very intimidating as well. When, you, when you're pulling up to the start and your opponent is much, much larger than you, that can be really quite intimidating because obviously in rowing, having, having the height advantage is, is a fantastic thing. And uh, I always used to struggle. I'm only five foot nine. So in rowers talk, I'm not that tall, um, which was always quite intimidating. <laughs> I don't know, five foot nine, uh, almost <laughs> as tall as me. <laughs> well, what we can enjoy is the stunning shots of the Oxfordshire countryside. As these two scholars make their way down the course, bring you a couple of confirmed results, starting with race 160, which was a win for Exeter Rowing Club by four lengths over Merchant Taylor School. Race 161 
was a win for Mossbourne at Rowing Academy over King's School Canterbury Boat Club. And race 162 was a win by a length for Tideway Sculler School over Rachel Granger of Headington Boat Club. Race 163 still in progress on the course between Leicester and Medford Modern, but despite the best efforts of Lara Britton, it hasn't become too much of a race. As Lauren Henry has really taken the mantle and accelerated away. Just see one of the questions come in when Slandaff's next race. We understand their next race is going to be race 168, which is due off at about quarter past two. I think the regatta is running slightly behind, only by about a few minutes. So I imagine that'll be about 20 past two. It's a heat of the junior single skulls. That's Landaff 